Hello? Uh, today I want to go through uh, various uh, possible positions of uh, kettlebell handles in the rack. That's a very important topic for kettlebell lifters because it can affect the entire set, but they can go right or wrong. So uh, that's uh, uh, two big uh, groups, uh, and one is uh, symmetrical and another one is uh, asymmetrical. So let's go with symmetrical one first. <clears throat> so symmetrical uh, rack fixation will be uh, when handles not overlapped on the same level. And there's uh, two subgroups and one uh, would be uh, totally separate handles where there's no, no connection whatsoever uh, even in some uh, situations, uh, forearms can be totally parallel. <sighs> uh, so kind of each arm, each kettlebell on its own. <sighs> and well, the, the main benefit of such uh, rig fixation is the uh, excellent symmetry, of course, but uh, the drawback or challenge of it is a, is a balance. Uh, really tough one, especially when you're competing with a, you know, um, or lifting maximum uh, challenge challenge weights uh, and when you get tired fatigue you know when you're losing precision it might get really hard to stabilize bells bells in the rack when you not allow them to touch or overlap um, so that's not a very common uh, way to lift it's usually well uh, usually but if it's used i see it uh, for maybe a heavier weight um, lifters uh, in general, um, thick, tall uh, guys with a strong arms, uh, wide torso, uh, where for them might be simply difficult to pull arms so close to each other because chest is so wide. And because of such proportions of a body versus kettlebells, it actually seems pretty durable for uh, these guys to feel very stable and kind of the weight of kettlebell uh, doesn't do much of a harm or interruption to forearm stabilization. But for a middle, uh, light class, uh, uh, light weight class athletes, uh, that's, that's a pretty challenging way to lift and I don't see it often. Uh, another situation is then uh, when it's symmetrical but when the handles connect. <coughs> so, <coughs> elbows still perfectly leveled and then we're not overlapping handles but we allow them to touch and at least, you know, that gives you some sort of uh, stability and it's much better than, uh, well, or, or uh, uh, more stabilized and, and exact than no connection at all, but still a pretty tough uh, position to hold because you actually kind of need to start somewhat push handles uh, uh, towards each other to, in order to keep this connection. Uh, so they not really do any, any hold. They just stabilizing kettlebells and, and um, provide you a perfectly symmetrical wreck but not giving you any relief in uh, in your grip or in your shoulders so uh, it's again requires a pretty good flexibility and um, precision of your of your movements to hold to lift bells like this so uh, but the next uh, bigger group is uh, asymmetrical wrecks and they are most common and uh, myself you know, I'm a part of uh, uh, this kind of lifters who's using asymmetrical rig, but there's still quite many variations of it. So uh, let's go through it. So uh, that's when we do handles overlapping. And you see here can be quite a many variations. And uh, the first most obvious one is that uh, you can go uh, with the right handle on top of left, or you can go with the left handle on top of right which shifting uh, balance either onto the left side or to the right side. Uh, and that's something that like handwriting pretty much, you're right-handed or left-handed and usually usually you pick the side and you go with it and that's something that was bothering me for, uh, for a long while. Um, this slight asymmetry because uh, actually you're able to level your elbows when you're paying attention to it. Uh, but then you need to shift forearms to this side in, in, in order to make overlap, right? So let's say that's a symmetrical work. And if we're not moving elbows anywhere, then to make overlap, 
that's it. We just let uh, one bell fall to the side or, or like this. So you see two bells, they slide on the one side, which means that one leg is loaded, like this arm is heavier than underneath, this one is lighter. So, uh, and it's not an ideal situation, but uh, that definitely provides a good um, uh, stability in the rig. You know, that's, uh, I'm not using a fingers yet, but at least, you know, one kettlebell is pressing on another, and that's pretty stable. You kind of, you know, feel like the bells wants to stay in the rig. You don't need to really wrestle them here. Uh, and then the style I'm using for long cycle. And, well, the benefit of a Rex with no finger slog is that you are uh, sparing your forearm and, and hands uh, strength as long as you have a good insertion and good balance because you're not wasting your energy to grab the handle and to hold it and squeeze it. So both uh, forearms are symmetric, uh, symmetrically loaded, right? Not, not grabbing any handles where it's like a separate uh, rack. Uh, handles not touching or when it's touching or when it's overlapping but with, without fingers. So it's a lot easier on the forearms if your balance is good. If your balance is off or insertion is off, it actually might get really hard for forearms as well. But we're talking about you know, perfection here. So uh, uh, what, uh, what I've discovered lately and kind of uh, put a decent amount of time to experiment on this is that um, it's not a good idea to shift sides and, and change overlap within uh, one set, you know, like each next rep or each next set. It's, it's, it's quite confusing, difficult, but what's possible and what I just did uh, in your 10 minutes of long cycle, 85 reps, is uh, you uh, need to focus uh, for one training cycle on one uh, style. Let's say you're overlapping your right over left and you go full preparation for competition from the very first workout to your main set, which is about 12 weeks long. And then the next training cycle, uh, another like 10 or 12 weeks, you can do the totally opposite style. And that's how you can go uh, over the years, you know, just keep switching uh, one training cycle right, next training cycle left, right, left, right, right, left. And that's how within one training cycle, you feel like pretty stable that you stick with a particular style. But in the course of a year, you actually will have equal amount of time spent spent with the left side that overlapping and right side overlapping, and that's I believe can give a, have a good effect on overall uh, uh, symmetry. <clears throat> well, and of course, <clears throat> when you overlap, it also might be you know slight different handle positions. You can pull them away forward, like you can overlap the closest corners or uh, further corners or middle. And uh, for this matter, I like better to overlap the through the corner because this way I kind of like hugging. But almost it's, uh, it helps to keep uh, upright torso position when kettlebells closer to your chest. When you push bells apart, so you need to uh, kind of counterbalance them and lean back. And actually, uh, uh, when I do cleans only, when there is no jerk face, I like to push bells apart uh, uh, push bells away forward so this way kind of rack feels a bit more stable maybe because kettlebells are uh, lying more stable on the forearms uh, but when i go for long cycle or jerk i like better to keep it this way because it's a better trajectory of a jerk this way well then uh, finally the last group is uh when it's a uh, Overlapping and handle slog. Uh, that's when we use our fingers to also stabilize bells in the rig. <laughs> and here it's uh, very important to understand what, what you are doing because uh, uh, what's the goal of it is to stabilize bells in the rig fixation, right? To prevent them from sliding, especially in the moments of uh, um, dropping bells from the top into the rig, that's moment when they can sleep uh, slight accidentally, so you want to grab them just in case. Or when you land the elbows uh, from the clean into the rig, you also want to grab the handle just in case, you know, to uh, prevent them from uh, falling apart. Uh, uh, so th that's the goal for it. Uh, of course, well, 
it can compensate the lack of erect fixation, but that's not ideal way to go. You know, we ideally want to uh, think that you know everything is fine with our elbows, and we just want to give some stability uh, of our kettlebells in the rack. <coughs> so when you do that, uh, you really need just one hand <coughs> because uh, usually uh, you're reaching and grabbing the top handle with opposite hand and that's very comfortable you're literally grabbing the handle actually what i like to do i like to squeeze like uh, points of my finger right between the root of a palm and the handle it's kind of uh, almost get squeezed there and i don't need to actually use the strength of my fingers to hold it so it just just there and it can be just a few fingers don't need to be all four just pinky uh, next finger and this hand just to chill there's no point for it to squeeze the upper hand because it's just nothing to grab really it's slippery it's just a waste of a uh, forearm muscles because you see i'm trying to grab this hand so hard my forearms all squeezed but i don't do any help to stability of my rack so better to not bother even <laughs> so this hand should be free and only uh, the opposite arm the lower arm grabbing the upper handle that's it And then try to be uh, efficient about it. You grab it to stop the bells, and when you stop, you actually can kind of let it go for a moment, or at least uh, decrease the pressure a little bit. And then you can kind of squeeze it again for jerk, uh, yeah, and, and then and then for draw. But when you're standing in the rack, try to hold it as less as possible. This way you will not overuse your forearms. So use it only when it's really, when you really need it. When um, when all momentum kind of is uh, stopped and bells when they stop in the rig, uh, just let it go a little. Uh, if you want to use uh, all, uh, all fingers and both hands in the rig, uh, well, there is a way of uh, kind of a bulletproof uh, hanging in the rig, and that will look like this. And clean. And then, kind of, you put fingers like this. But it's quite difficult to unlock them. Uh, so that's really the way, kind of, surviving mode when you want to just, I don't know, take your time and spend, I don't know, maybe 15, uh, 30 seconds in the rack. <sighs> because it's, it's quite difficult to go right away from jerk. You need to, kind of, uh, apply effort to unlock them well if you if you get really deep if you get the shallow it's a bit easier to unlock this way if you want to get really solid lock well you can kind of roll them a little bit get it deep you know lock the knuckles and bells not going anywhere and you actually not using any strength of your forearms or hands so you can stand pretty long there as long as your elbows hold um, And um, you see, we kind of way, went from minimum collaboration and connection of uh, handles to maximum connection of handles and hands. And of course, I think that the perfection and uh, absolute kind of excellence and skill is to be able to balance bells uh, without any uh, overlapping and, and finger support because again that's the most symmetrical one the most equal distribution of a lower to left and right side but it requires uh, quite an excellent uh, sense of a um, of a precision and balance and that's something to work on uh, it's, it's basically a, a lifelong um, goal at least myself it took me many years uh, to get rid of the finger slog uh, i stopped using a finger slog in 2017 which already was like uh, uh, 19 years in into my sport career. Well, I started thinking about it, it about uh, too late. Uh, so I literally, it took me just a few years to get, get used to this style, uh, but that's really worth it. So kind of general advice um, from my side uh, is uh, try to use fingers as less as possible. If you're able to stabilize bells in the rack without fingers, so just don't use it. And if you do a uh, handles overlapping, well, it's, it, it might uh, make sense for you to try uh, switch side uh, each next training cycle and see uh, how it will go. Of course, well, it will feel uh, quite odd, 
and uh, it's important to deload, slide for the very light weight, see how it will go. And if it will go well, build up to your competition's weight, well, if not, well, maybe stop and get back to your usual regular style, but again, that's uh, at least what, what I do, and so far it works works pretty well, and I'm really happy about it uh, when, when I'm changing the site of an uh, overlapping style each next training cycle. So, uh, yeah, that's my thoughts of uh, Handles uh, position situation in the rec. Uh, hope it will be useful. Guys, uh, good luck.